Hello and welcome in the 3.16 edition of my almost max possible IQ Magic Find build. There are many changes and a big damage increase compared to the previous version of this guide. First of all, keep in mind that this is a standard league build made with legacy items, however you can still make a similar build on the temporary league with non-legacy items. The skill tree and jewels except legacy road searching eye jewels are non-legacy and they are possible to do on the league. If you wanna use this in the league, you would also need to use some other gear with lower IQ as a lot of the gear is legacy. Here's a list of gear possible on the league. Before I go into details, here's a quick overview of what to expect from this build and guide. In a nutshell, it's 100% crit chance and hit chance when on full buffs. These chances are a bit lower against evasive monsters. 82% cold penetration, cooling strike against all enemies except the hexproof ones. My current farming strategy is solo farming of just low tier maps, which means tier 1 to tier 5. I did some tests and I can also do yellow tier maps, but since this build is strictly focused on IIQ with almost no compromises despite of the headhunter belt, it's not viable for red tier maps solo farming. If you wanna make a really strong build to farm higher maps, probably tornado shot or lightning arrow skills and lightning damage scaling would be better for you. I use ice shot skill to maximize cold damage as the main damage source and to get a freeze chance in order to get a lot of IIQ wind reaper bonus from frozen monsters. I don't stack freeze chance stat, I try to get a lot of crit chance as every crit with enough amount of cold damage would freeze. When I'm on full buffs, my crit chance and hit chance is 100%. I stack flat cold damage and I try to get a lot of attack speed as flat damage scales good with attack speed. I also have a lot of cold penetration. 62% constant cold penetration which comes from 30% from triple blanket snow cluster jewel mod, 8% from fangs of frost, 24% from elemental weakness curse on hit ring which also penetrates other elements. Additionally, 20% of temporary penetration, which comes from the legacy Wise Oak Flask. This gives a total number of 82% code penetration. I'm also using Curse on Hit Ring and Wish for Death Cluster Jewel mod, which gives Calling Strike against cursed monsters, so it's basically Calling Strike against almost all enemies. Because of the Grid's Embrace chest, which slows me down by 20%, I try to get some movement speed from different sources to mitigate it. I will explain all of my gear, skills and tree in this video, now let's get into the guide. At first I wanna show the IIQ and IRR values. The IIQ is almost max possible in the game. My current IIQ is 203% flat and 50% from 25% Wind Reaper and 25% Divination Distillate, which is 253% in total. Since I have a curse on hit ring now, I was able to drop Hex Touch and Elemental Weakness Curse Gems from my Herald of Ice setup and now I have item rarity gem level 18 linked to Herald of Ice, which is additional 68% IIR from Herald Shutters and is not included in these calcs. Flat item rarity is 48% from the body armor and temporary is 110, 50% from Wind Reaper bonus and 60% from the gold flask and as I mentioned Herald Shutters get additional 68%. Now let's check out the gear. Weapon is a 30% quality Legacy Wind Reaper bow. If you wanna farm high tier Delirious maps, you should consider replacing it with a good rare bow instead. I have enchanted it with the accuracy rating Harvest Craft. Path of Building says that the attack speed Harvest Enchant is just slightly better, but I prefer more accuracy as it's very important in terms of freeze chance because, as Wiki says, accuracy dependent attacks make a second accuracy check to confirm the critical strike. If the check fails, only a normal hit is dealt. Accuracy can play an important role in quantity of critical strikes. So we need accuracy to deal more crit strikes for more freezes and shocks to get Wind Reaper bonus. I also have the accuracy belt enchant and I will talk about it while discussing the belt. I was using Rigwald's Quills Quiver, but now I replace it with a rare quiver with plus one chain implicit mod. It's a very strong mod and I have plus one chain on the ascendancy, so with this quiver I have plus two chain, which is super strong for map clearing. Helmet is a rare lion pelt with 20% quant and a lot of life. I have finally got the 40% increased ice shot damage enchant on it. Armor is the Grid's Embrace chest, which is the only body armor that gives 15% quantity and it also gives 50% item rarity. 
I have 50% increased damage corrupted implicit mod on it, which is better than plus one to all gem levels because it affects both mapping and single target skills as well as all the other skills that I use, such as Herald of Ice. Gloves are the legacy unique Sadima Touch gloves with maximum 24% quantity possible on this item slot. A good option is to mirror a 20% IAQ rare gloves, which are much stronger, but then you lose 4% quant. I use a pair without any enchant because projectiles from enchant attacks cannot be supported by IAQ gem and I don't wanna lose any IAQ. Boots are the legacy unique Goldwyn boots. They give 30% IAQ and it's the max possible value on this slot. Same as with gloves, you can get rare boots with 20% quant and you get more life, movement speed and damage but it would also sacrifice 10% of IAQ. Because of the fact that they grant only 10% movement speed, the enchant is the 10% movement speed one. Amulet is a syndicate crafted spinefuse talisman with 9% IAQ corruption implicit mod so I have 29% IAQ on it, which is only 1% of the possible maximum on this slot. This 1% here is actually the only 1% that I miss to be able to achieve max possible quantity in the game from the items that I have. I would only have to replace my Headhunter with the String of Servitude 15% IAQ belt, but I don't do it because compared to Headhunter, String of Servitude is too weak. The previous anoint was Constitution for more life, but now I have changed it to Fangs of Frost for 8% cold penetration and increased cold damage. If you don't feel comfortable with your life pool, you can use Constitution. The catalyst choice for the belt, as well as for the other jewelry, is the fair toy catalyst, also for more life. Rings are rare ones with maximum 20% IAQ for this slot and tier 1 life mods. In future I'd like to mirror some good 20% IAQ rings. I have a new curse on hit ring which allowed me to do some nice changes. Since I curse on every hit with the ring now, I don't use the hex touch and curse gems with my Herald of Ice setup and now these two gem slots were replaced with the item rarity gem to get some rarity from Herald Shutters and with the Ice Bite support so I have Frenzy Charges Generation Source now. Another big benefit which this ring allowed me to get is Wish for Death Medium Cluster Notable. It gives Calling Strike against cursed enemies which means I have almost 100% Calling Strike. Belt is a headhunter because it's the most enjoyable and crazy item in this game and it gives a lot of fun. It has 30% increased accuracy rating while affected by Onslaught Labyrinth Enchant. I'm using Cinder Swallow Earn Flask, which grants Onslaught, and with this enchant my chance to hit is increased. Catalyst choice is Fertile Catalyst for increased life. Intrinsic Catalyst is also a good choice, especially if you have some problems with strength requirements. This is the only item slot that I've sacrificed IAQ for better fun and build power. The perfect option for me would be a headhunter with 5% IAQ implicit, maybe one day it will happen. Before I show my flasks, I want to say that I don't use any instilling or enkindling orbs on them. Maybe you will find some good options for you, I know that the reused at the end of flasks effect enchant is highly preferred by many players, but it doesn't work for me since I spam flasks all the time and with these additional effects I feel like I'm over spamming flex so it lowers their general uptime and I would feel like I would have to control their effect all the time to do it effectively. First flask is a divination distillate. The uptime isn't very high, I just try to spam it all the time to get some of the AQ and IR bonuses. Second flask is gold flask with 30% increased duration and crafted 30% IIR, so it has 60% item rarity in total. You can also use increased effect prefix instead of increased duration for even more item rarity, but for me the increased duration mod is better as the uptime is more stable. This flask replaced the Wise Oak flask, which in its legacy version has 20% cold penetration which is very strong for this build. So if you wanna do higher maps or don't feel too good with the gold flask, the Wise Oak flask is the flask that should replace it. One more important thing about Gold Flask. The Rarity mod does not stack with other Rarity mods from other flasks. So for example, if I have both Divination Distillate and Gold Flask active, the Rarity will only be 60%. Same with the Cinder Swallow Urn Rarity version. It also doesn't stack, so if you use Gold Flask, Rarity version of Cinder Swallow is not the best option. Let's get to the third flask. It's a Legacy Quicksilver flask with increased duration and increased movement speed. Same as with Gold Flask, some players may prefer increased effect prefix instead of increased duration, I feel better with the increased duration one. Also keep in mind that the movement speed version of Cinder Swallow Urn won't stack with the Quicksilver Flask movement speed suffix. 
However, it would stack with the implicit movement speed mod of the Quicksilver Flask. Fourth Flask is the bottled faith. It gives a lot of damage and creates a very large AoE consecrated ground that also greatly helps to survive in hard situations. If you're using Bottle Faith, remember to Divine Orb the plus percent to critical strike chance and increased damage taken to enemies mods, they both are very strong. Last flask is the Cinder Swallow Urn with critical strike chance mod. As I said before, I don't use item rarity here because it won't stack with gold flask rarity mod and I also don't use the movement speed 1 as it won't stack with the quicksilver flask suffix. Now let's get into cluster and non-cluster tree jewels. I'm using 9 cluster jewels, 3 large and 6 medium and a lot of them have been replaced since the last build guide. I'm also using 9 non-cluster jewels, so this build uses 18 jewels in total. I was trying to get synthesized craft bases before I crafted my jewels. The best mod for me was 2% attack speed and if I couldn't get it I was picking 5% increased cold damage once. So there's always some more damage from the implicit. Here are the mods on my large cluster jewels. I use Blanket Snow on each of the three large jewels. This mod grants 10% cold penetration against chilled enemies and since the Ice Shot skill always chills enemies we got a massive 30% cold penetration from them. Other mods on large jewels are Sadist on each of three jewels. This mod, if recently chilled, ignited and shocked enemy gives us 60% elemental damage increase and since we have 3 such mods, it's 180% damage increase. Here are the mods on 6 medium cluster jewels. First jewel is a increased effect of curses node 1. It has wish for death mod, as I mentioned before, with this mod and curse on hit ring we basically have a calling strike against all enemies except the hexproof ones. Second mod is evil eye. The 6% increased damage taken mod is really strong. Second jewel is an increased effect of non-damaging ailments node 1. First mod on it is Blast Freeze. It gives us nice 20% increased cold damage and most importantly it makes freezes inflicted spread to other enemies which is really good for Wind Reaper IQ freeze bonus. Second mod is Storm Rider. It's very important mod as it's basically our only source of power charges. It gives 10% chance to gain power charge when we shock a chilled enemy and since we always chill, this is quite easy. Additionally, this mod gives us nice cold and lightning damage bonuses. Let's get into third and fourth. They are increased critical strike chance node once, as crit strike chance is really important in this build, so we can shock and freeze as many monsters as possible for nice Wind Reaper MF bonuses. Both of the jewels have same mods. Each of them has pressure points as a first mod, each of them gives 5% chance to deal double damage with critical strikes and increases crit chance by 30%. Second mod on each jewel is Quick Getaway. Besides 25% increased crit chance, each of it gives 5% increased attack speed, which scales really well in this build, and 5% increased movement speed if we dealt crit strike recently, and movement speed is also very important as this build isn't too fast due to the IQ gear on almost every gear slot. Here are the 5th and 6th jewels. They are increased projectile damage node ones. These are very strong jewels in terms of damage. First mod on each of two jewels is Evil Eye. Massive damage increase at close range. Second mod on each jewel is Repeater. 30% increased projectile damage and 8% increased attack speed is very strong. Here's the rest of all other non-cluster jewels which are Viridian and Abyss jewels. I use 9 non-cluster jewels, 1 unique Watcher's Eye, 5 Viridian jewels, and 3 Abyss Jewels. First jewel is Watcher's Eye Jewel. I recently bought it for one mirror and it increased my in-game damage tooltip by over 10%, so it's a real game changer. The mandatory mod on it is plus percent to crit strike while affected by hatred. As I mentioned before, crit strike chance is important to get Wind Reaper bonuses. The second mod is increased attack damage while affected by precision. Third mod is added flat cold damage while affected by hatred. I think it's the second best in slot jewel for my build. The only better is triple hatred, but it costs about 7 mirrors. The one with flat cold damage, plus percent to crit strike and cold penetration. Next 5 jewels are Viridian jewels. I tried to get some synthesized jewels with increased attack speed implicits. I tried to grab as much attack speed, crit chance and other damage as possible. Every one of them has life mod on it, 
as it's very important to have some survivability in this build as it's not too high because everything is focused around item quantity. One of them also has corrupted blood immunity as it's very important in every PoE build. Last three jewels are the Abyss jewels with legacy life mods. Surprisingly for me, flat 50 HP from Abyss jewel actually adds less life than 7% increased life mod from a normal jewel. Now let's have a look at the skill tree. As I mentioned before, movement speed is important for me and as I don't have quick step allocated for movement speed, I grab 10% movement speed if I haven't taken damage recently evasion mastery on the fleet foot node. Fleet foot node gives another 11% movement speed. Second tree mastery skill is Bow Mastery. Arrows gain additional critical strike chance as they travel further. These are actually the only two masteries that I took. If you don't feel too good with your life pool, you can drop these two masteries and take two life mastery points instead for 10% increased life and plus 50 to maximum life. Don't forget to grab the life leech point as it's the only life leech source and it's important for survivability. Assassination, Heartseeker, King of the Hill and Lethality nodes are important to increase crit chance which helps with freezing as many monsters as possible. They also add nice crit multiplier. Blood Siphon, Revenge of the Hunted, Heart of Oak, Herbalism and Thick Skin are the life nodes that keeps us alive while mapping. I also grab the Acuity node and this additional accuracy rating massively increases the damage. This is pretty much it for the skill tree. My Ascendancy is Deadeye. It has Gathering Winds for permanent Tailwind, which gives increased action speed, which technically is increased attack and movement speed. Ricochet for plus one chain, Endless Munitions for plus two projectiles, Fire Shot, which mitigates the point blank penalty with long range attacks and also makes barrage attacks to have no spread. My major Pantheon God is Soul of the Brine King now, as after 3.16 patch it gives freeze immunity now, which is great. The minor Pantheon choice remains unchanged and it's Soul of Shakari for poison mitigation. Bandit's quest status is help Alira for additional plus 15% to all elemental resistances and a nice 20% crit strike multiplier. Now let's have a look at skills and auras. Main 6 link skill for map clearing is Ice Shot, connected to Awakened Crater multiple projectiles, Awakened Elemental damage with attacks, Awakened added cold damage. The Awakened version of this gem at level 5 gives plus 1 to active cold skill gems, which is the Ice Shot gem in this case, so it's a really good synergy. Next gem is increased item quantity. Last gem is Divergent Hypothermia. The Divergent version lowers enemies' cold resistance by 0.2% per 1% of quality. This gem works very well with Ice Shot because this skill always chills enemies, so I'm getting the permanent massive more damage bonus from it and more damage mod is really good because it scales way better than the increased damage mod. Secondary 6 link is for single target monsters and bosses and it's basically almost the same gem setup as the first 6 link, but the only difference is barrage support gem instead of awakened greater multiple projectiles. Note that this is a barrage support gem, not the barrage skill gem which is a whole different thing and I don't use it. Hypothermia gem works great here because of its increased effect of chill which really helps with slowing down and overleaching bosses. Same as in mapping gem setup, it's divergent alternate quality version for enemies lowered cold resistance. As I said earlier in this guide, now I have a curse on hit ring, so I don't use hex touch and elemental weakness gems anymore. These gems were replaced with item rarity and ice bite gems and my current herald setup is Herald of Ice, IAQ gem, IAR gem on level 18 just because of the intelligence requirements, ice bite support as a frenzy charges generation source. Thanks to this curse on hit ring, now I have some additional item rarity from herald shutters and a source of frenzy charges and I think these are nice improvements. My other auras are Anomalous Hatred and Anomalous Precision connected with Enlighten level 4 for less mana reserved so I can level up the Precision Aura to level 12 without any mana problems. The 23% quality Anomalous version of Hatred gives 11% increased chill and freeze duration and the 20% quality Anomalous version of Precision gives 10% reduced mana reservation for this gem. Movement skill is Dash. It doesn't have any support gems because of no free sockets, but it still works fine without them. My offensive damage buff is Val Haste connected to increased duration gem. I really recommend using it because it increases both damage and movement speed. 
note that I don't use normal haste aura which would reserve mana and I am only using the temporary Val version when I catch enough Val souls to activate it. It really helps with bosses and also with faster mapping. Val haste quality is zero as it's irrelevant. I changed my defensive skill from Steel Skin back to Immortal Call. It's gem level 3 and it's triggered by anomalous cast when damage taken level 1. The anomalous version of cast when damage taken gives 20% increased skill effect duration. It's also supported by the same increased duration gem as Val Haste. My mapping skill GMP setup tooltip shows 164k 698 damage and with all flasks active it shows 210k 886. On the single target barrage support setup it shows 59k 231 damage and with flasks active it's 75k 739. Keep in mind that Hypothermia support gem doesn't cause any damage increase on the tooltip and more damage against chilled enemies is a really big damage boost. Same with the massive cold penetration, it's not visible on the in-game tooltip. When I import my builds to Path of Building and when I apply all flasks, power and frenzy charges and other modifiers, the damage tooltip shows almost 1.5 million. These tooltips include the Wise Oak flask for 20% cold penetration, but for low maps I'm replacing it with the gold flask. Path of Building paste bin will be in the pinned comment. My resistances are 75, 75, 75 and with all flasks up they are 81, 81, 81. Physical damage reduction is 10%, chance to evade attacks is 14%, spell damage suppression chance is 10% and suppressed spell damage prevention is 50%. Life pool is 4k 912 with fertile catalyst applied on all of the jewelry, amulet, rings and belt. If you don't feel too strong with this build, just swap some of the IQ items for normal items until you can improve it with some better tree jewels or other gear, because otherwise you will struggle and map clearing can be too slow and too painful. Path of Building Pace Bin, as well as the forum thread with written version of this guide is in the pinned comment. That's all for this version. If you wanna see gameplay and drops with this build, please check my other videos, I uploaded some farming maps with it and I'm gonna upload some more from 3.16 patch. I'm gonna farm Glenak Cairns region, there are a lot of new maps in this region now and Beyond mod is available at Zana device, so I'm hoping for some juicy maps with nice drops. If you like this video, please consider subscribing for more. If you wanna see my Glenak Cairns Atlas passive setup, here's the link. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.